Harry was the first real pet, the first anything that was really mine. I always fantasize about having a pet, and I beg my mom for one relentlessly. I'll clean up after it. I'll spend all my time with it. I'll be responsible. I won't quit like I did with soccer and violin lessons and Yiddish classes and computer camp. Please, Mom. Please. 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 Finally, exhausted, she took me to Woolworths, where we bought Harry for $7.39. I had my own secret plans for my pet parakeet. I had seen enough movies and TV shows in my seven years where I knew exactly what would happen. My parakeet would become my sidekick, my best friend. He would accompany me on adventures and we would solve crimes together. Sure, an awesome dog would be better, but a bird would do. Af after all, birds could talk. They could sit on your shoulder and fly messages to safety if you fell down a well or were captured by evil villains. Harry never came close to any of my hopes or dreams for him. In fact, I'm fairly certain that he hated me. <laughs> I don't think he was naturally evil, possessed, or even a bad-natured bird. And looking back, I realized that Harry had very good reasons to despise me. It all started with the teacher parakeet to talk tape, a looping cassette that repeated, hello, 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 over and over again. I would play it every day, convinced that with enough work, he would start speaking. I teach him all sorts of expressions, and we would hilariously banter back and forth. When he didn't speak at all, and wordlessly stared at me when I repeated, hello, 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 I doubled my efforts and left the tape on overnight. <laughs> but every morning, he greeted me with a steely silence. I may have actually driven him insane, when I approached him with an affectionate, hello, he would start to dive from my fingers, attempting to rip as much flesh out of me as possible. <laughs> he never spoke, but his thirst for vengeance said more than enough. <laughs> to clean his cage, I had to use my thick black skiing gloves to save my skin from his beak of terror. The other reason Harry Haight despised me was that I was a misogynist. <laughs> for three years, I didn't realize that Harry was actually Harriet. I learned this from one of the inept Israeli immigrants my mother hired to fix things around the house. It was her way of supporting the Jews and in some small way making atonement for all the tragedies that had befallen our people. <laughs> the broken garage door, dysfunctional outlets, and nail-studded carpentry were a small price to pay. Isaac the carpenter noticed my bird while taking one of his many breaks in our kitchen. He reached in and examined Harry. Harry's malice for me clearly didn't extend to crappy carpenters, and Harry allowed Isaac to inspect him. Isaac explained that my bird Harry was not a male at all, but a female. Harry squawked and struggled to get free and pecked my eyes out. And I decided that Harry, Harriet, would be her new name, and maybe with it a chance for a new beginning. I needed to make amends and soothe any sore feelings she had. And at 11, I figured the best way to do this was through song. So I attempted to woo her little bird heart. It was a powerful love ballad in the spirit of the late 80s. <laughs> oh, Harriet, please tell me why you are the best parakeet in the world. <laughs> I love you so very much. I want to hold you in my arms and kiss you on the beak. Harriet lunged at me through the cage bars, <laughs> squawking wildly. Flesh, she seemed to cry out. I want your flesh. I want to taste your blood. I was lost for how she could have resisted my powerful love ballad. <laughs> On another visit, Isaac explained that he had a male parakeet named Rocky that we could buy off him and try putting a breeding box in their cage. It seemed like a wonderful idea. I imagined all the adorable baby birds who would love me and would fill the void left by Harriet. We introduced both of them and romance blossomed. They jumped from perch to perch together. They locked beaks in an internal embrace, regurgitating food to one another. The parakeet French kiss. And when Harriet lunged at me, Rocky just cocked his head to the side, seeming to say, Orman, what are you going to do? 
Soon they nested in the breeding box, and I watched Rocky ride on top of Harriet as they bounced around the cage mid-coitus. It was a solid education in the birds and the birds. <laughs> and eventually they laid eggs, most of which hatched. I peeked in at their babies. They resemble little pink blobs of liver. Oh, Harriet, please tell me why you are the best mother parakeet in the world. Harriet raced over to me, eager to rip some food off to feed her chicks. I'll kill you. I'll peck your eyes out. I'll rip your tongue out and feed it to my babies. I dare you. Get close to me. Her babies grew small feathers and little beaks, and I was hoping with a little love and positive example, they wouldn't grow up to be a total bitch like their mom. It became less fun when the first bird died. Then there was the dead chick in the breeding box. Harriet pushed it onto the cage floor, a gift for me. <laughs> and the babies kept coming. I couldn't give them away fast enough. I ran out of words to name them. We had bluey and greeny and bluish greeny and whitey and off whitey and yellowy. <laughs> and Cracker was my favorite. She would ride on my head and make little bird turds on me, but the novelty wore off and none of the birds ever spoke. One day Rocky developed a limp. Had I done something? I was wrecked with guilt and begged my mom to take him to the vet. After all, they were my responsibility and I was partially worried Harriet would blame me. The vet wrapped his little leg in a splint and set him up with a little tiny bird IV and we left him overnight, but he didn't make it. Harriet was a widow and I was sure it was my fault. We buried him in the backyard and I realized that now I would have to be the father to all these damn birds. <laughs> there I was with the menagerie of parakeets I didn't want anymore, and they were indifferent to me, except they relied on me for food and water and cutter bones and millet treats. They derived more affection from the mirrors where they endlessly looked at their reflections than me. When I walked in the room, they didn't look up or chirp for joy unless I was holding a carrot or some other vegetable to peck at. And I realized that animals with brains the size of nickels were dumb. <laughs> Worst of all, these birds depended on me to change their cages, a task I dreaded like synagogue. <laughs> the bird feces would pile up in mounds and I'd have to remove the cage bottoms, wash them with a hose, chip it off, and pile it with fresh newspapers. The smell was overpowering, even afterwards. Every day my mother would yell, Leo, change the cages, vacuum up the spilled food. This was not what I wanted. There were no adventures to be had, no crimes to be solved. This was work, responsibility. I was trapped and I started to hate them. We moved the birds to the basement like a dark family secret. <laughs> Every moment of joy in my life was peppered with dread. Had I fed them? Had I changed the cages? Had another one died? Had something I'd done killed Rocky? Was Harriet waiting for me under my bed to go to sleep to peck my eyes out and kill me? My family finally took pity on me. When I was at sleepaway camp, my birds disappeared. My mother donated them to her pet store and I got to be a kid again. An irresponsible kid without any pets. I was free. Deep down though, I knew I'd failed them. Most of all, Harriet. I still have occasional nightmares. I come home and slowly open the door to the basement. I know I've forgotten something and then I see them. They're half-starved zombie birds. Their cages are piled high with filth. They look at me with resentment, all of them except for Harriet. Harriet stares me down. Oh, Harriet, please tell me why. Her gaze is fixed on me. You are the best parakeet. Her beady eyes shine with murder. In the world, her, her. I slowly open the cage door and I accept my punishment. <laughs>